As we move into 2021, I think we can all anticipate a bigger government and with a bigger government, that's going to bring with it more government investigations. And for that reason, our team at Compliance Mitigation and PrisonProfessors.com, we want to help more business owners and people who have professional careers understand how easily they can be trapped into a government investigation and potentially face challenges with white collar crime. So we want to give you this preliminary uh, lesson, I guess, from our from our coursework at Compliance Mitigation to help a little to help people understand how government investigations get started. Because we really believe that if you understand more about how government investigations get started, you can take more efforts to protect yourself against the enormous costs and complexities that come with a government investigation. So let's start with a little discussion on, on really how do we understand corporate fraud? And, and we should, in order to understand corporate fraud, we should kind of begin with a basic review of what our nation's founders thought about when they were structuring, structuring our government more than 200 years ago. Now, most all people that attended school in America remember that we have three different branches of government. Now, the first branch of government is the legislative branch. And of course, the legislative branch is the one that passes laws. Um, they, they, well, I should say that, le that puts legislation forward or bills that go on to the executive branch of government, which is the second branch. And that's, of course, led by the president who signs those bills and turns them, that legislation, into a law. And then we have the third branch of government, which is the judicial branch. And of course, that's divided in the federal system by three different levels of courts. We have the district court level, which is the finder of fact. We have the uh, intermediate level, the appellate court, which reviews whether due process and constitutional rights were protected at the district court level. And then we have the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the United States. Now, since we declared our independence, of course, our nation's government has grown. And as a result, every individual and every business is really subject to, to following more than 4,000 laws and, of course, millions of pages of, of, of different um, regulatory uh, rules that, that could potentially have enormous implications. And, and, and because there are going to be these government investigators that work in both the Department of Justice that enforces the laws and in the regulatory agencies that oversee whether a person or a business is in compliance with those regulatory rules. So despite starting with an intent to create jobs, um, business owners really have to be thinking about how they have to be also be complying with rules and laws. And also, you know, sadly, many of the rank and file employees also have to be thinking about how those investigations begin. So the investigations may start in any number of ways, but ordinarily they begin with uh, investigators launching a secret investigation. You see, they're gathering information to assess whether they want to review documents or interview people. And when they interview people, they are going to want to speak with them as either a government witness to an investigation, a subject to a government investigation or potentially a target to a government investigation. But whether a person responds as a witness, subject, or target, that person is putting themselves in potential, in the crosshairs of potential liability. Because despite not having um, any intention or, whether, or any knowledge of whether they're doing anything wrong or breaking any rules, regulations, or laws, as soon as a person speaks with a government investigator, that individual is facing potential civil or criminal charges for corporate fraud, obstruction of justice, or any number of white collar crimes. So with so much at stake, it's really important for people to get a sense of how these investigations begin and what transpires during these investigations so that they can make better decisions. Because in some cases, it may make sense to, to even hire an attorney to assess whether a person is complying with rules, regulations, and laws. Because agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, and other government agencies do not hide the fact that they are going to begin their investigations in secret. 
So neither business owners nor the people that work in those businesses will ever know that they are being investigated until the agencies are ready to reveal what they are doing. And an agency will not make the case public until they feel as though they've got a very strong case. So when, when they feel as though they have a strong case, the investigators are going to begin making, making inquiries. And those inquiries may start because they received a tip from a whistleblower. Um, they may receive a complaint from a consumer. They may have received um, some uh, uh, third party group like the Better Business Bureau may alert them to, to uh, the reasons for an investigation. But it, what, what, however it starts, once the target or once the agency targets an individual for an investigation of a corporate fraud, the agency is going to move forward with one intention in mind. And that intention is either to bring some type of administrative action, like an injunction that could close the business down or change the way the organization does business, or they could potentially file a lawsuit in court, which can result in uh, the seizure of assets. It can advance to a criminal proceeding in which case, again, liability, uh, uh, liberty is at stake. So business owners and employees really want to do themselves a favor by understanding everything they can possibly understand about how a government investigation begins. That knowledge, theoretically, should help them make better decisions. So assuming that a person is really doing business in good faith, then the, the, the person is going to really want to start a, a process that's going to keep them you know, keep them in line or keep them at least defend them against some of the enormous costs that accompany a government investigation. So I'll give you an example of what happened with a, uh, a real estate developer that I had some relationship with that found himself in the crosshairs of a government investigation. So the, the, these investigators at the FTC decided to go through the entire process that a consumer would go through. So they, they logged on to the company's website, they filled out a lead generation form, and then of course a prospector called the investigators back thinking it was a consumer. The investigators then, before they took the call, they had preloaded a tape with information about the time of day, um, the date, the reason that they were making the call, what they were waiting for, and they preloaded that tape, and then they recorded the entire conversation with the telemarketing person who was giving the presentation and responding to questions without ever knowing that she had been uh, the, the investigators were really recording information about what she was saying and were trying to gather evidence that they could use later when they decided to make their investigation public. So what's the takeaway from this, this type of a lesson? It is that if you are a business owner or if you work for a business, it's really important to understand that every text message you send, every phone call you make, every email that goes out could potentially be used against you, even though you may be acting in complete good faith. So if you understand that the way that a government investigation begins, if you understand that somebody could always be listening, and if it's a government investigator, they're going to be listening with a very cynical perspective, believing that you are not acting in good faith, but rather that you are doing something nefarious in some kind of way, or in, they're going to twist what you're saying in some type of manner that will build the case against you. And so it's just really important to understand that every day that you go to work, every time you send a text message, every time you are on the telephone, every time you send an email, you should always be thinking, okay, we've heard what George Orwell wrote about 1984 and big government is always watching or big brother is always watching and always listening. Well, that is definitely uh, the situation today where we have a strong commitment to mass incarceration and where we have many government investigators that are building their careers, not really based on pursuing justice, but rather on building cases, cases that will help them advance their career. And so the more you know about that, the more, def the more of a defensive posture you can take.
Now, that's not a suggesting in any way that you cannot be an effective sales professional. You can't be an effective business professional. But what it does mean is that if you understand what's you know, working against you, you could really begin uh, using a, creating a best practice process for you and for all of the team members that work around you. Because there's actually a theory in law that's called a respondent superior. And I, I don't know if I pronounced it right. It's a Latin term, respondent super, superior. What that means is effectively, you've got to let the master answer. If I'm going to translate from Latin, it means that if you're the boss, you are responsible for everybody underneath you. And so if you have somebody that's doing something wrong on your team, you could potentially face civil liability or criminal liability. And if you understand that, you may be a little bit more conscious about creating defense mechanisms. And that's what our team at Compliance Mitigation really helps people do. Uh, at Compliance Mitigation, we help individuals and businesses design a best practice approach to record every aspect of the sales cycle from the time you hire an employee to the time you train an employee to the scripts that you give an employee and, and corporate messaging to um, looking at every script that, that has ever been recorded, reviewing the invoicing, the statements that go out to consumers, the advertising, the way people come into your funnel, all of those different functions within your business can potentially have liability from both a civil case perspective and also a criminal case perspective. Now, of course, I'm not talking about people who are not operating in good faith. If somebody has a predisposition to fraud, well, nothing is going to protect that person. But if you're like most small and medium-sized business owners, you really want to do a good job. You want to do a good job for your team. You want to do a good job for your investors. You want to do a good job for your community. You want to restore, uh, or, uh, restore uh, confidence in the business community. You want to solve pain points for customers. You want to do a good job. That's why you went into business. And if you want to work for somebody, whether it's in healthcare, mortgages, uh, insurance, um, finance sector, um, cryptocurrency, even the, 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 the newly regulated cannabis industry, you likely are going forward with the intention of being a good corporate citizen. But at the same time that you're trying to do your job, there is a big government organization that has a vested interest in you know, fueling our nation's commitment to mass incarceration. And they are, they, if you come under their crosshairs, you will be viewed from a very cynical perspective. So the more time you invest in understanding how corporate procedures, uh, how you can protect your corporate procedures, the more time you invest in training, the more time you invest in transparency and documenting everything going on within your business, the safer you are going to be, the, the precaution you are going to have with regard to l at least lowering your level of exposure to vulnerability of a very costly government investment investigation. And I'm not only talking in terms of money, because the money is extremely costly if you, if you find yourself targeted by a government investigation. The lawyer fees are going to start very likely in the five, $600 per hour rate. And there's going to be multiple lawyers on the case who are going to want to review every email, every text message, listen to every phone call, review every script, have uh, interviews with all of your employees. It can very easily exceed costs of, of a million dollars or tens of millions of dollars for big government investigations. But of course, it's not only the money. It's your business is at stake. Your reputation is at stake. Your, the stress that comes with a government investigation is off the charts. The exposure to potentially worrying about a white collar crime 
off the charts fear and and you know it affects your earning capacity it can affect your your relationships with people it can re- affect uh, your future it can affect your reputation so really what you want to do is protect yourself and you protect yourself by documenting your processes in a best practice way you want to measure your progress you want to create a very strong uh, cloud-based customer relationship management program to document all of your processes and you just want to make sure that if you are ever questioned, everything that you have done is going to protect you against um, the accusations that you've done something wrong. Because a government investigator may tell you, oh, we just want to know the truth. But the reality, the government investigator wants a promotion just like every other human being. They want to advance their career. And they advance their career by securing injunctions against businesses, um, fines, um, closing businesses down, asset seizures, advancing people from a civil investigation to a criminal investigation. So the more you understand about that, I think the better you can be at protecting yourself. That's the reason that we launched Compliance Mitigation. It's really an offshoot of our brand at prisonprofessors.com. Because we definitely want to, you know, minimize exposure for people that are facing sentencing of of any kind or any type of judicial proceeding. But one of the ways that we can do that is helping people understand before they become the target of a government investigation. So it's never too early. It's never too late to begin sowing seeds for a better outcome. We really encourage you subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our podcast, visit us at compliancemitigation.com or at prisonprofessors.com. We've got an abundance of free resources to help. And of course, we've got an outstanding team that stands ready to help any individual that wants guidance on how to protect themselves from a government investigation or how to work toward a mitigation strategy in the event that they have been targeted for um, either an investigation or a prosecution. I am Michael Santos with prisonprofessors.com and and compliancemitigation.com. And I want to thank you for being a part of our community. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Uh, As our motto says, we did the time so you won't have to. Visit us at compliancemitigation.com and prisonprofessors.com to learn more. Thank you.